Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Natalie. I'm a marketing consultant for Coca-Cola, specifically for the Myanmar branch. I've been working in uh, Myanmar for about five years now, and uh, I'm really honored to be here today to share a bit about consumer behavior right now in Myanmar for anybody who might be interested to venture into the country. So just to start things off, I guess, let's start with, you know, some first impressions of, you know, the country Myanmar. I think it's not really the most popular ASEAN country. And I think I, I really didn't know much about it when I first stepped into it. So when I first went to Myanmar, it was back in 2016. And to be very frank with you, I have heard uh, not much about it at that point. And um, I had only heard uh, quite a few horror stories from some uh, friends who were working there at the time. But when I first went to the country, um, definitely there was a lot of rampant blackouts and water cuts that were unannounced. Uh, not too dissimilar from what we've recently experienced in Selangor, but nonetheless. Um, it was a time where actually it was, uh, it was a struggle to get even the basic necessity uh, such as Wi-Fi. And at the time, um, I remember that uh, Wi-Fi, home Wi-Fi itself, was something that was very newly introduced. Um, they had entirely skipped the whole dial-up Wi-Fi modem phase that we had to go through uh, about 10 years ago. And they straight up went into office Wi-Fi and home Wi-Fi. And it was, it was still quite affordable. So that's a great thing that they were offering to the public and uh, people of the, kin of the country. Uh, and also, um, I think it also reflects uh, the, their consumer purchasing power because they don't really have a lot of malls. Uh, when I first got there, they, I think, only had two malls. And even then, it wasn't the kind of mall that you would, you would expect. So I guess this is where you would see that people generally don't shop too much uh, at malls. They don't have this mall-going habit. And uh, even back then, uh, Facebook was what they considered to be king. If you were to talk about marketing content or digital content, it would be specifically referring to Facebook. Um, I know that there might be a few experts on the panel who might be speaking about SEO and all that. Um, this is where I personally feel that SEO is not particularly useful in a country like Myanmar yet, because uh, it, it's not really something that is utilized here and it, it would not be the most beneficial way to invest for your uh, awareness drive. And yeah, like I said, Facebook is king. It's where the community and everybody in Myanmar goes to to get their information, get the latest news and so on and so forth. Now, what is it like today? Now, that was five years back, but through that time, it has gone through a very fast paced change. Um, in line with uh, the, this horrendous pandemic as well, um, there is a bit of a new norm. So over there, uh, from a time where people found it really expensive to get a single SIM card, it is now incredibly affordable to the point whereby most youngsters would have dual SIMs uh, uh, with multiple gadgets or maybe one phone that uh, allows for a dual SIM. And this is where actually a lot of teens and young adults are also frequently gaming. Uh, there's more gamers now, and they are playing more frequently now more than ever due to the fact that they're stuck at home. Um, the habit of ordering food online has is forced to become a habit because they simply have no other choice uh, other than to cook at home, obviously. But yes, it's slowly becoming a habit, and that is really great for food service aggregator platforms. Um, purchasing groceries online used to be something that was rare and really uncommon and it's now finally becoming an option that most would actually consider for their family safety. Um, the knowledge of scanning QR codes used to be close to none. Um, people would not be you know, aware of how to turn on the camera and place it over a QR code, scan it, go to the micro site and do whatever that you wanted them to do. There was no such knowledge of that up until recently when, uh, what do you call it? Um, contactless menus were introduced uh, in a lot of FMB outlets. And that was where you were forced to learn. Before that, they were never pressured to even, you know, come this far in, in learning in all these uh, technology, um, you know, features. 
Um, also, live streaming now is much more common, not just among um, key influencers or celebrities, but also just, you know, the common person might just live stream with their friends for, uh, for normal. Now, let me just break down as, as much as I can, um, as fast as I can, uh, three aspects that I'm, uh, I know a little bit more on uh, from my line of work. So one of it is the e-commerce industry in uh, Myanmar. So it, its relevance among consumers has expedited and, as, uh, exponentially. And the reason why is because um, there's a very fierce uh, food service aggregator. I, I've just shortened it down to FSA. That's what I call it here. In Myanmar, and um, initially, when when things uh, when COVID first hit, there were namely three food service aggregators, and um, despite one of them called Door to Door being the pioneer and the oldest one uh, in the country, it was really quick to be forced to take a back seat simply for various factors, including the fact that they were not able to recruit enough um, riders in time. Um, the fact that the competition, Food Panda and Grab Food, was uh, newly introduced, like just in this year or the end of last year, and they were quickly offering free deliveries, uh, delivery fees, whilst door to door was still charging really high delivery fees. Um, also, the fact that Grab Food and Food Panda were able to recruit a lot more customers, like FMB outlets, which made it seem more relevant. It gave more variety to consumers. And that's what made the longest FSA pioneer in the country quickly, you know, take a back seat. Um, despite the fact that online grocery order uh, would be predicted to be a norm by now, it's actually not. Uh, it's it's a, online payment is sort of um, still not something that is very common. It's still very difficult. Obviously, there's a cash on delivery option. But it's more on the fact that uh, a lot, there's been a lot of complaints around these um, um, supermarkets not being able to deliver the produce and the products in the same quality that they would if the consumer were to have visited the physical outlet. So that's the reason why uh, online grocery orders remain low in the country. Um, there's a lot of creative home businesses that have started, a lot of mini startups. And the, I, uh, I think it's particularly interesting because there's a lot of actually housewives who have actually started to cook their own home, you know, homemade recipes and started, you know, saying like, oh, I'm, I'm selling 20 packets today. Um, drop me a message if you're interested to, you know, enjoy this dish in particular. And I think this is a very unique way for the local women to partake in entrepreneurship. Um, online payment, like I said, it's slowly becoming more and more accepted. E-wallet itself is something that is gradually um, becoming something of the norm. And that's really great for the country because up until then, uh, it was pretty much very heavily reliant on cash on delivery. So that's e-commerce. Now moving on to gaming, which is something that um, I, as a marketing consultant um, uh, for, for Coca-Cola, had, had to be very focused on. Um, the industry grew, <laughs> as, as already predicted. Uh, I mean, in 2019 itself, there was about 6 million gamers. And in this year alone, it has now exponentially increased to at least 8 million, with nearly half of this, 3.2 million, being uh, hardcore gamers, as, as the term would go. Um, these hardcore gamers tend to gear towards um, this popular mobile game called Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Uh, I can definitely, you know, talk more about this, you know, um, in, in private one-on-one -on -one later on. But um, according to one of our agencies, you know, one of our research agencies, um, the frequency of gaming itself has increased simply because teens and young adults now are stuck at home without being able to sort of go up, go out and about and physically express themselves. So they then channel it towards the digital world. So there's a huge increase of 65% of them starting to play daily. And from the uh, usual gamers, they've actually increased 34% to playing it multiple times a day. Um, I think it's also incredibly smart that um, FSAs like Food Panda are trying to you know, adopt the habit of pairing gaming with meals. Like, for example, on the right here, you can see that 
um, they actually hosted an online gaming tournament whereby they even uh, offered a free promo code uh, in a commercial that they would air in between the tournament uh, matches. So I thought this was particularly unique and smart of them because this was when they were newly introduced into the market. And this is a great way to reach teens and young adults who are most likely able to learn how to use their app faster. Um, as I mentioned earlier, more streams and more views. This comes from mainly gaming streamers. And I suppose this is where a lot of um, relevant corporate brands, if, you, if you'd like, uh, would be interested to sponsor these uh, influencers and gamers in order to uh, better promote their content and better relate to the, the gaming community. So yeah, my personal advice for any brands who would like to venture into gaming in Myanmar. Um, one thing to importantly take note of is um, you, you have to do your homework and you have to identify where your target audience is actually playing because there is a difference between the hardcore games and the casual games, as I would say. Um, more females play casual games while more males play the hardcore games like Mobile Legends Bang Bang, for instance. Um, and I think, um, yeah, this is where it's important that you identify where your target audience is, find the right gaming uh, app or platform, and that will heavily determine your media plan and your media investment. Um, I think I would like to also share another in uh, insight, which is that uh, according to uh, research, it's quite interesting that Myanmar gamers are actually much more open-minded and accepting and susceptible to uh, in-game reward ads, contrary to what people might think that um, if you put an ad on, on something that you enjoy, you will actually get some hate. Um, this is actually uh, different for Myanmar gamers. And I think it's because of the nature of them whereby they enjoy getting free things and they actually are very open-minded to to the idea of you giving them something for free in order for them to pick up on a certain new information. They are very much susceptible to that. So that's just a little bit of insight. Um, now moving on to packaging, which is something that uh, I actually had to deal with for my company. Um, usually seasonal packaging, it, it's a bit of a hit or miss, isn't it? Um, but I think right now, given the current COVID pandemic, situation. Uh, I think this is where uh, packaging, especially seasonal packaging, not necessarily maybe packaging, you know, related to campaigns, uh, would be hitting a home run for a lot of consumers. And I think it's because um, it's, it's really important to sort of maintain relevance during these troubling times. I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the air and everybody is very, you know, is riddled with uh, helplessness. And I think this is where if your brand is able to deliver the right message um, through this, through, you know, packaging itself uh, in line with a festivity that makes sense, I think it would highly relate and be highly well received among consumers. Like for instance, over here uh, in my pictures here, it's something that we just recently did in Myanmar. Um, in, in case you're not aware, in Myanmar, there's actually two major festivities. Uh, one of it is in April, which is um, known as Ting Jan. It's a like Songkran in Thailand, whereby you welcome the new year. Uh, but the most recent one was uh, in October, and it's called the Ting Jut, which is um, basically uh, what's more commonly known as a homecoming festivity. Uh, people tend to travel back to their hometowns to pay their respects and kowtow to their elderlies and even their teachers as well. So yes, this is where, you know, uh, we came in and we said, you know what, you know, times are very hard right now and it's, it's not easy, you know, it's, it's pretty much impossible for you to travel back home to, to be with your loved ones or see, you know, someone you once respected. And this is where we came up with the idea of um, this uh, seasonal packaging on our RGB, our regular glass bottles. Um, and we make them available to the public for purchase. And we even like, you know, gave lanterns along with it to, to because it is a lighting festival after all. Uh, we gave it to multiple uh, KOLs and celebrities and influencers, and it was well received. I think everybody was going through a really tough time, particularly because the country is 
you know, uh, experiencing a second wave right now. And uh, everybody felt very uplifted from this. And um, they went on to share it and it kind of went a bit viral on uh, in the country itself. So that's something that uh, we're very proud to be a part of. Um, given the very, very limited time, I hope that what I've shared so far has been of help or of some learning to you in some way. Uh, however, if you would like to link up with me to better understand the country or um, gaming, packaging, or anything experiential, uh, please feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn with my uh, handle here. Thanks for your time.